And this is the USS Enterprise NCC 1701D, as captained by Jean Luc Picard in Star Trek The Next Generation. Uh, probably the second most iconic of the Enterprises, right? The first being either the refit Constitution Constellation from the movies or or the original Enterprise, but this is the Galaxy Class, Enterprise D. This thing is a weird looking design. I've always thought it was a little strange. Um, but also pretty cool. And it's just kind of weird looking from certain angles. It's super, super duper top heavy with that giant ass saucer. And it's short little midget nacelles, but I actually really like the design of the nacelles. Um, I like the E better, but we'll get into that when we review the E. Uh, this thing is kind of intimidating from straight on. Kind of makes me think a little bit of like a manta ray or something. All right, let's talk about the stands first because they suck and I hate them and I harbor great resentment towards them. Um, the Enterprise D comes with two, a shorter stand and a taller stand, and we'll get into why in just a little bit. But first, let's say that it's the same crap stage as with all the other stages that they come with, or stand, I guess. Um, this one actually, you know, clips into place pretty snugly, but well, in theory, this this ball joint thing is cool because then you can pose it, you know, how you want. Um, in practice, especially with the Enterprise D, that means the thing is always going to try to point down because the Enterprise D is so front heavy. I mean. Look at where they're putting the stand, on the very front of the engineering hole. But that's only just over, what, a th uh, Okay, well, it's not halfway, anyway. It's not the midpoint of the ship. It's not where the center of gravity actually is. As you can see, this particular stand, the tall one, will not, will not hold it um, back or up that way. Uh, maybe if we turn it around? Let's see if it does any better. Now, I will say this is not the stand that came with this D because I had it up on top of a six foot shelf and I had it I had it tilted back because it tends to want to you know lean forward and I'm pretty sure I even kind of had it leaning up against the wall a little bit so that it tried to just you know brace it and one day um, okay I, I'm pretty sure somebody slammed into the wall on the other side, uh, you know, on the, on, in the room on the other side of my collection room. So they caused a big vibration. But this thing fell like this. And it did so quickly. And <clears throat> I think because of how the shelf is, I kind of had the stand. I don't know. Anyway, it did like that and just like that. It tipped right over. Touch. Tipped over. Did a shelf dive right off the top of a six-foot shelf. Snap that fucker right off right there. Um, so that stand is no more. Uh, this one is for the future D, which now that I think about it, I need to run grab so that we can compare them and see how it's a little different, but I can still use the little small stand and I actually guess I had never tried before because I didn't realize this one is much uh, much better at holding it in position. Can Oh, there we go. It lost it. See, it's good for a minute, and then you move it around once, and then it will never want to stay in that you know, horizontal flying pose ever again. Eww, that's very precarious, and I don't trust it. Um, anyway, so the stands are crap. I totally need to look up that company that sells acrylic stands for them. The Enterprise. This thing is super detailed from the painted-on windows to the sculpted escape hatches um, and then painted. Uh, these things, I don't even know what that is. That is some different material that's been inset into the plastic. These are the phaser strips. What do they call them? Uh, this is the primary phaser. There's phasers back there and in the back of the engineering hull. There's phasers on the bottom side of the saucer and on the bottom side of the engineering hull. Another you know, longer phaser strip right there. I don't remember what these yellow bits are, but again, they, they feel kind of like the same material. Something else, just inset, or maybe that one's a decal. I don't know. It feels like it's inset into the plastic. 
There's tons of lines sculpted all over. Um, you can kind of see them as I wave my hand over it. There's just a bunch of little lines sculpted all over the saucer. Um, and then, of course, the big, the rings, which they're not rings because this is an ellipsis. An ellipsis, sorry. Uh, anyway, the sculpted rings around the saucer. Uh, this thing is just full of detail. Maybe you can see the lines sculpted on the nacelle better because there's not all sorts of other stuff to distract you from them. But, the, but these little lines, they cover the ship. The engineering hull, top and bottom. The neck is the only place that doesn't have anything there. You also may notice that the neck is missing some paint. I don't remember if this is the original version of the Enterprise or if it was a reissue, the original version of the D, but whatever version it is, they forgot to paint the windows. There should be little black lines all over that. And uh, I got this right when it was released. Diamond Select made available some decals that you could... You just had to contact customer service and they mailed them to you for free. You just have to stick them on so that they have... It's just one big sheet. Um, and then it has a bunch of lines drawn on it so that it has windows on the neck like it's supposed to. I obviously have never applied mine. I don't even know where they are right now. If I ever find them, I will try and apply them, but it honestly doesn't bother me much. I do know that later reissues of the D fix that. Um, let's get into the lights and sound. I love this big, chunky... No, that's not right. Anyway, this big piece of red plastic. And hey, it lights up. Doesn't it? There we go. Let's see if we can turn down the lighting, get some... There we go. The cells light up great. I love it. Um, oh, this one features a separate button on the engineering hull. You just push that in, clicks on, and then you've got a permanent lights on. So we've got three impulse engines, two on the saucer, one on the secondary hull. The, the cells are on. The deflector array is awesome. And then there's a large light up there. That's it. Not as many lights on this one as on um, but like the Enterprise BF. Uh, it looks cool. Oh, hey, so we've got the, uh, or not the A sitting here. Produce slide this guy in. Like, these ships are not the Enterprise to scale twice. The, um, I believe the Enterprise D was the, it's the length of the bit long original Enterprise, but the A scale is a little six longer than the original. Long. You know, these are not, they're all about uh, 16 to 18 inches long. The, 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 uh, fairly um, have a bunch of, so that if they're all display looks the same so uniform if you have them on a shelf he has a roughly mass size obviously the d size that whole lot more masser than and compare let me look at a fucking song uh, yeah how compare it to the a this way um if i can figure compare it to the a. and there's a small so big in of the d I mean, much plastic in the, the sauce b in a as in air Um, what else? Anyway, I know about this thing. Sounds. Uh, so we want to... Oh, yeah, definitely Picard is pitched down. This one, uh, the E, I think, pitched down. might be pitched down, but not as much. He definitely sounds it's a little bit a little... This, a little force. A little phaser noises. That one didn't sound too bad. Okay, the best thing about this ship is this. Oh, I interrupted it. Oh. The saucer comes off, and you get a saucer reattachment noise, or... Separation sound. And then you have just the free-floating saucer. Um... I'm going to have to take a break right there, and I'll be right back. All right, so the saucer uh, separates. It, 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 uh... There we go. That's what I want to point out. It says Enterprise NCC 1701D. Otherwise, this is pretty bare. There are a few things sculpted there. Don't know what they're for. 
Um, so this, the engineering hall, the secondary hall, has magnets in it. No, the magnets are in the saucer. Um, there's three slots that line up with three pegs on the saucer so that, turn this off, so that when you plug it back in, it goes in the right spot and you get the saucer reattachment noise. So that's a kind of a fun feature. The uh, the reason this vehicle comes with two stands is because now you have two pieces. So you can put, there's a stand slot there and in the battery compartment, so you can put the stand in one, or the short stand in one, and the taller stand in another. Don't believe it matters which one you use. There's a that's a stand slot right there. And boom, now you can display your Enterprise D in separation mode. Um, the lights. I almost think there's a way to get the lights to stay on and the saucer when separated, but I don't remember how. Because holding the button doesn't do it. I think that just cycles through all the sounds like the E does. But maybe it's not a big deal, because those are the only lights on the saucer anyway. This is a better section. So the engineering hull, it's got more stuff sculpted there. It's got a phaser strip. It's got a few escape pods. Uh, I'm gonna assume that's the second, the battle bridge, but I don't know. And it says uh, Enterprise D on there. Little electrical contacts for plugging it in. Anyway, so that's that's that thing's fun feature. Um, I don't remember if we looked at the bottom of this ship. We've got more escape pods. Um, again, I don't remember what the gold bits are there. Another phaser strip, more phaser strips. Ooh, more phaser strips down there. Um, you can see the screw hole plugs. This one's not put in quite straight. This one also not faring very well. But aside from really the, the, the those covers are really the only thing that aren't put together really well. These ones stand out to me really badly. Especially that one because it's not in flush. That one is. Um, look at all the escape pods on this thing. So anyway, the Enterprise D, aside from the stand problem and the fact that it's just a freaking very front heavy ship. I mean, the center of balance is Somewhere in there where the neck is. It's really heavy. Uh, but it looks really nice. It's a pretty well put together ship. The, the, the only real problem is the stupid stand. But still, I risk it. Um, I shall be right back with the future D so we can compare them. Alright, so here is the future Enterprise D from... Um, the last episode of Star Trek, The Next Generation, which, embarrassingly enough, I have not seen. Um, it's just a you know, variation on, on the D we just looked at. Stand under it. It's the same ship with a few modifications. Obviously, it's got a third nacelle in the back here. Um, the nacelles also have some extra rebleys put on them. I'd like to take this off the stand. Alright, there we go. So you, you can see the, the cells. Um, button kind of is a pain to push because it's under a cell now. You put, and it's just a... Okay, so this part, can you see that? There's a big gap there. This does not attach very strongly. I don't know if that's a bug, a bug, a uh, 
something specific on mine. But that button is impossible to get it to turn on. Here, let's put that back in frame. I can't get it to turn on. Okay, now none of the sounds are working on this. What's going on here? Gage Cloak, unfortunately, does not have a cloaking mechanism. Um, so let's see. Uh, what else makes it different? It's got extra impulse engines here underneath that third nacelle. It's got little wings or fins on the these things. It's got a couple of guns put up here, which... So maybe these plugs are not screw hole covers. Maybe they're just plugs because it doesn't have guns like this one does. There's also a doohickey on the back of that thing. And then I think the final difference is that the neck and the saucer has this big... Uh, that's a gun, I believe, isn't it? I don't know. Like I said, I haven't watched all good things, but... I didn't finish Season 7 for some reason. Other than that, I think it's pretty much the same. Uh, I believe the paint is all the same. Well, no, there's a bit more extra red lines, at least on the saucer. I don't even know if you can see them on that. Um, the bottoms look the same to me. Still says Enterprise D on it. Um, but then maybe you heard... Oh. Some of the sounds are probably the same. Okay, that's annoying. I think the electronics on this one are just a little bit spottier. That didn't sound like Captain Picard. Oh, you may notice that the windows are painted on the neck on this one. So, Admiral, or is he Captain? I don't know, I can't remember. Riker does the voice. Let's see if I can get this stupid light to go on. When I put the batteries in, the lights were just on. It still makes the saucer separation. Oh, and it's uh, Riker. Oh, and I was wrong. There's magnets on both halves. And the cells light up for that. That's cool. I like the extra engine lights there, impulse engines. You know, I think the electronics are minor damage. These impulse engines are not lighting up. And I have no idea why the stay on light feature is not turning on. So, anyway. Um, I like how the future Enterprise looks, you know, a little more menacing with the little guns up there, the little fins kind of make it look cool. However, I just feel the add-ons, the add-ons feel, I don't know, a little just cheaply tacked on. I mean, the fact that there's this giant gap here on this one and it just kind of pulls away like it's only anchored at the back, which you can't see because the nacelle's away. It feels like it's only anchored back here. And here, not at all. Can't hold it still, but there, you see that? This um, is on a little better. Uh, anyway, if you like the design, it does. it is a cool variation of the Enterprise to have the extra nacelles and weapons. It's neat that we've got Riker's voice. So both of them are worth getting. Except for the stands. The stands are crap. You know, because I have to pay $40 to get a good stand. Anyway, that's enough about the Enterprise D, which I can't get them all in frame anyway. So, thanks for watching. Enterprise out.